Hi, welcome to Salesforce Training. My name is Tammy, and during this training module, we're going to walk you through how to manage your sales leadership plan within Salesforce. The activity-based platform selling process has been adopted by Brickworks Group of Companies and requires a wide range of information to be entered into Salesforce. This data includes activities that sales staff have with their customers, planning and activity targets discussed between rep and their manager, and customers and prospect, prospect relationship details. Salesforce uses tools to allow all this information to be entered quickly and accurately. This is done in a logical workflow, which includes Sales Leadership Planning, SLP, Brick, wa brick Wall Scorecard, and Customer Selection Criteria. In this video, we're going to be concentrating on Sales Leadership Planning. Now, when it comes to accessing Sales Leadership Plans, while I'm in Salesforce, you'll notice at the top of your screen, you have a tab here called Sales Leadership Plans. When I click onto Sales Leadership Plans, at the top I see Views. Views are a way that we can filter information. So I can view all Sales Leadership Plans, or you may see a view called My Team's Current SLPs. This is a good view to be used by managers so they can show their team members current SLPs. Below, I can see my most recently viewed Sales Leadership Plan. Now to create a new sales leadership plan, all I need to do is click on to the new button. As I click on to the new button, I can go and create my SLP. Ideally, an SLP is created after the sales staff member and their manager have discussed which activity goals will be targeted for the new month. Once it has been agreed upon, we can go ahead and start creating our sales leadership plan. At the top of the screen, we have user. So I'm going to enter who will be the user for this SLP. That would be myself. So I'm going to enter my name. And I'm in here as test user. Normally, this would be the name of the user owned by this S owning this SLP. Down below, we have an SLP reference area. This is like the name of the reference. When it comes to the naming convention, we'd like it to be SLP space dash space, the name of the user, space dash space, and the month and the year that it's related to. Over to the right-hand side, I have a start date and an end date for this SLP. I'm going to set the start date to March 1st, and I'm going to set the end date to March 31st. You'll notice that some of these fields have a red line next to it. That indicates it's a required field, and we can't hit save unless data is entered in, in these fields. Down below, we now track our activities. We want to identify activity goals for the three fixed market areas. So where we have Activity 1, this will relate to our market platform visits. Underneath Activity 1, we have a description. Now next to a lot of these fields, we have a faint icon. If you hover next to the icon, or over the icon, you're going to see a tooltip. This is custom help text written to give you clues on how to fill in the details of the field. This could be best practice, naming conventions, or data entry rules. So for Activity 1, we can put in a description for our market platform visits. So my description is going to include four sales calls. Over to the right, we have Activity 1 targets. So I'm going to set it to four. At the end of the month, we're able to run reports to give us our actuals, and our actuals will be compared to our targets. Then I move on to Activity 2 for Working Platform Visit. That could include eight sales calls. And then under Activity 2 Target, I can include my target of eight. Activity 3 
could be focusing, we'll be focusing on buying platform visits. And here I'm going to set it to four sales calls, where my activity three would show four. Activity four, five, and six are free text fields. So the sales rep and their manager can agree on additional activities. This can include, for activity four, a new activity called update contact details. And in my description, I can say update contact details in Salesforce. And for my target, I can include 20. For my fifth activity, it may be something like updating my call cycle. And for the description, I'm going to put in more details. Update call cycle for top priority. Excuse me. For top priority builders. For my target, I can include 50. And for my last activity, I'm going to put in qualify projects. And for my description, I can put in more detail such as review and update project projects and their status, create opportunities, and tasks. And for activity six target, I can include 100. So once I've entered my sales leadership plan goals for the month of March, I can go ahead and click save. Once I've saved my sales leadership plan, at the top of the screen, you'll see some additional information, including your total targets, so that would add all your targets up, your total actuals, and the percentage as well. These are calculated fields that we can update. Scrolling down a little bit further, we have activities, activity histories, notes and attach attachments, and approval history. At the top of the screen, if a manager were creating the sales leadership plan, instead of it being owned by the manager, you can actually change ownership to the sales rep. Now, once a rep has completed their sales leadership plan, it's now time to submit for approval. Once you click Submit for Approval, this SLP record will be routed to the manager. The manager will receive an email notification and they'll be able to log into Salesforce and either approve or reject the SLP. Let me show you an example of what the approval process will look like. I'm clicking through to an existing sales leadership plan and when I scroll down, this will give you an idea of the history of the approval process. Once it's been finally approved by the manager, we'll see an overall status of approved. We'll also be able to see whether or not the SLP was rejected or recalled, and any comments during this approval process will be audited in Salesforce in this comments area. Now at the end of the month, what we will need to do is then compare our actuals with the targets. So at at the end of each month, you're able to click onto this button, SLP Activity Report. Now you should be tracking all of your tasks and activities within Salesforce. And within each task and activity, we have activity types. Based on your activity types and the dates, they'll show up under an activity report. So clicking onto that, that button, You'll see a report and it'll give you the details of how many tasks and activities have, have been completed during this time period. This isn't the best result in, my, in this test report because you don't see the activities. But in this report, it'll clearly show you how many completed activities you have for that month. Once you have those details, you're able to go back to your sales leadership plan and you're able to edit it and show your actuals. 
Once we have all of your actuals, we will be able to calculate your total actuals and show you your actual percentage. So, this completes the training video on sales leadership planning. Some key takeaways is ensure you meet regularly with your manager and agree upon activities for each month. Ensure you create a sales leadership plan for each month and submit, and submit for approval. At the end of each month, run your SLP activity reports and update your actuals and submit again for approval. Thank you for attending this recorded training session. There are additional e-learning courses available, so please take a look at what's online. Thank you.